Bugler! Sound recall! Corporal Clemens, sir, from Master's Brigade at Dottie's Crossroads. Who gave you permission to come riding across the face of my command yelling like a fool? Have you got a message for me from General Masters? Yes, sir. Deliver it. That's it, sir. The war's over. Yeah! We surrendered to General Grant in Virginia, a place called Appomattox Courthouse. When? Three days ago, sir. Three days ago. General Masters just got word himself, Colonel Thomas. Our wires were down. With your permission, sir. Rig up a flag of truce, blue boy. Charge her up! Yo! Let's go. I'll be a sergeant, sir. Can I be of any service to y'all? I'd like to talk to your commanding officer. Who be giving orders today, Jim? Yes, sir. Major, I've just received word that Lee surrendered to Grant three days ago. Yes, sir. You know it? We received the news yesterday. I don't think you understand, Major. The war is over. No, sir. Are you telling me that you intend to keep fighting? Haven't we just proven it, sir? But why? Because this is our land. And you are on it. We're all Americans. Yes, sir. That's always been the saddest part of it. Good day, sir. Colonel, thank you for your courtesy. Captain Anderson. Here, sir. 
General Robert E. Lee surrendered. Am I right? Yes, sir. That means that officially we no longer exist as an armed body. Yet everywhere I look here today, I see armed men wearing uniforms and flying the battle flag. Get it down. Yes, sir. Jameson! Yes, sir. Take down the flag. Yes, sir. All right, people, now listen to me, all of you. We have about 2,000 miles to go. 700 of them are between here and the Mexican border and through a Yankee occupation army. We are not going to give the lowliest blue belly we meet along the way any reason to suspect we're anything but a band of homeless pilgrims. Until we cross the Rio Grande, arms and ammunition will remain in the bottom of the wagons. You men pack those uniforms away and wear regular clothing. The poorer looking, the better. Now, once across the border, we still have another 500 miles to go before we reach a town called Durango. There we will be met by representatives of Emperor Maximilian, who will escort us to Mexico City. Captain Anderson. Sir. We leave at midnight. Yes, sir. Mrs. Langdon, my name is Benedict, Thad Benedict, late of Pittsburgh, but now of Natchez. And this here's my partner, Jimmy Collins. Word's gone around, Mrs. Langdon, that uh, you people are of a mind to put your place up for sale. Is that right? I beg your pardon, sir, but I'm the sister-in-law. I believe you want to speak to Mrs. James Langdon. Ah, Mrs. James Langdon. Thad Benedict is my name. I was just telling your sister-in-law here we heard the place is up for sale. Is that right? No, that is not right, Mr. Benedict. Oh, come on, ladies. We've come all the way from Natchez just to make you people a handsome offer. Mind if I get down? Yes, she does. And so do I. My father, resting over there. He minds, too. Well, 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 well. You must be Colonel Langdon. James Langdon. Well, uh, Colonel... I'm here to do you a favor. Well, let's see now. Uh, Langdon Hall Plantation. Ah, yes, here it is. 1,500 acres, is that right? 600 acres bottom land, 400 in pasture, and 500 in woods. Two streams, three ponds, with a two-and-a-half-mile riverfront. <laughs> nice place. Thank you, kindly. I imagine the house could use a little work, though, huh? Could stand it? Yeah. Well, I'll just have a look inside. We just swept the floor, Mr. Benedict. You understand? I'll give you 50 cents an acre. That's my top offer. You buzzards, you come down here looking to get fat on the misfortune of others. This house is not for sale. Not now, not next year, not ever. Colonel, we are business. You're trash. Well, well, you're a right plain-talking gentleman, ain't you? <laughs> you hear what the man said, Jimmy? Trash? All right, who's going to pick your cotton? And who's going to plow up all that bottom land out there? And who's going to chop the wood when it gets cold? Now, 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 Jimmy, no need no. to get up at you with the colonel. <laughs> Sixty cents an acre. Take it or leave it. Just like that, huh? 
just like that. And if I was you, I'd grab it. We're going to get it anyway, you know. We'll get the house and every last acre of land when they put it up for taxes. Oh, I see. And uh, how do you know it will be put up for taxes, Mr. Benedict? You went busted outfitting that rebel regiment of yours. Now, what do you say? Sixty cents or nothing? Granddaddy Langdon Horse. I think maybe he'd want you to have it. Thank you, sir. Look, George. Yes, sir. Bring along that anvil. Any tools you can carry. Yes, sir. Colonel. You anybody going with us to talk that there Mexican? Why don't you stop looking at me? I can't, Charlotte. I just can't keep my eyes off you. Well, you make me uneasy, Bubba Wilkes. So stop it. You know I've asked you a dozen times to marry me and you've never answered. I'm too young to marry. When a girl looks the way you do, she's too young to marry. Well, I am. And if you don't believe me, you can ask my dad. Ask your daddy. Your daddy knows there's no man better suited to marry Charlotte. me. Charlotte. Maybe you better go on up to the house help your mother. You're a good junior officer, Bubba Wilkes. Thank you, sir. Don't let anybody tell you you're not. No, sir. But as a young man, with a desire for my daughter's hand, you're pitiful. It embarrasses me to watch you. I don't understand, you sir. You sure don't. You let moonlight and magnolia blossoms go to your head. You forget the real purpose of your mission. Hear me! Don't tell me I can't resign, Joe. I volunteered into this outfit and I'll volunteer out. There's still a lot of work to be done. Not for me, there isn't. I came into this thing three years ago with 75 volunteers, all good riders. Do you know how many of those men are left? No, but I imagine you're going to tell me. Well, if you'll look out this window, you'll see 10. Two of them won't make Christmas. I still can't understand what those men have to do with you resigning. They didn't join the army, Joe. They joined me. For three years, I've watched them fall. Not one of them quit, not one of them deserted. Those that are left deserve more than a pat on the back from some newspaper editor. And I'm going to see that they get it. Army needs horses. Well, there's plenty of horses in the territory. Wild horses. Arizona, New Mexico. So we're going after them. And sell them to the army. I'm sure as hell not going to give them to the army. All right. Write out a letter of resignation and I'll see. <laughs> you come in mighty handy a few times. Take care of yourself. We may need you again, John Henry. You'll have a hard job finding me, Joe. Where's 
do, John Henry? Short grub. I've been trying for three years to get you to call me Colonel. Now it's too late. Where to, John Henry? West. Yes, sir. they're going to get in here today because i told them to be here today that's why where do you think you're going to mail that thing solomon there's a pony express ain't there somewhere still a long ways to oklahoma john henry anything could happen not to blue boy it won't come on tight while give me a chew well, wait a minute, Baker. I've only got one left. I'm oh, just a little bit. Come on, just we'll a little small bite. Hey, that's too big. Come on. Hey, give me oh, that. Oh. Give me that. Give me that. Plug. That's my last. Come on, now, Frank. I give you. A... Give me that. Yeah. All right, I've had. Hey, give me that, Frank. Give me that. Hey. Give me that. Give me that. Plug. That's my last. Plug. I'll be damned. Looky yonder. <laughs> Mr. McCartney, I broke my butt to get here, now you can show me something to spend. Your cooking's still as bad as I remember it. You go to hell. You still got that mangy old cat. Hi, Brad. The finest partner I ever had. Cleaves his paws and bears his legions. A lot more than some folks I know. Any trouble? Nope. Lost track of time, though. Correct, I'm a day early or a day late. You're four days late, but they don't know it. How are things at home? Bad, like everywhere else, I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess we better get organized.
McCartney, send you some grub. That'll be damn nice of you. I hope I can do the same for you sometime. easier than this. Not too close, Mudlow. Might be catching. It ain't right. Folks told an anger on me. Just because we wouldn't join your blamed old army. On oh, get it. Just mean. Just mean folks. Charlie? I'd, uh, I'd like to talk to you tonight after supper. After it's dark, you mean? All you want to do is hug me and hold me and kiss my lips. There's something wrong with that? Well, a young lady's looking for a mite more these days than hugging and holding and kissing. She's looking for something a teensy bit more substantial than periphery and trimmings. Like what, Charlotte? I've said all I'm going to say, Bubba Wilkes. Well? Will you walk out with me tonight after supper? Walk out? Walk out in these drip swamps where, where I could get eaten by a tiger or something? Oh, you must have lost your foolish mind, Bubba Wilkes. And it just goes to prove you don't have any true regard for me whatsoever. A tiger? First good grass you come to, give him a rest. All right, John Henry. We'll be back around sundown. Yeah. See your dust all day. What you driving, Buffalo? Stage arrived yet? Overdue. I ain't asking because I don't care, but if your name's Thomas, there's a couple of poppin' jays waiting inside to see you. They've been here for two days now. I give them water the first day and they took en route. Government agents? I ain't asked. They ain't said. Are you the gentleman that were looking for me? You are Monsieur Jean Henry Thomas. You have me at a disadvantage. I am Monsieur Pierre Pétain. This is my companion, Senor Luis Escudero. We have the honor to represent the Emperor Maximilian of Mexico. Oh. Won't you have a chair, Monsieur Thomas? Well, thank you. No, we're waiting for the stage. And we uh, understand you have many horses. Is that correct, Mr. Thomas? It could be. We have been authorized by the Emperor to purchase all you can supply. Well, I'm afraid you gentlemen have made a long trip for nothing. My horses are going to the United States Army. But, Mr. Thomas, we'll buy the whole herd. Sight unseen. Top dollar, if you drive them to Mexico. All expenses paid. Stagecoach coming. Sorry, gentlemen. Our army needs them. Pardon me. Mr. 
Mr. Thomas? That's right. My name is D.J. Giles, and this is my associate, Mr. Ezra Parker. Howdy. This is Short Grub. We're out of the U.S. Army Purchasing Office at Fort Clark, and we understand you have some horses to show us. No, I have some horses to sell you. <laughs> 3,000 to be exact, and it's the best herd you'll find anywhere. Fine. Shall we go inside? Thank you. We'll call your herd tomorrow, Mr. Thomas, as soon as our wranglers arrive from Brackettville. I suppose that out of 3,000 head, we ought to be able to find 500 or so that we can use. Now, our usual procedure is this. Just rein up a minute, Mr. Giles. You're going a little fast for me. Do you mind trotting through that again? <laughs> Not at all. I said that out of 3,000 head, we might be able to find 500 or so that we can use. You know, animals that meet our specifications. Well, I have 3,000 for sale, not 500. <laughs> well, now, surely you don't expect us to purchase just any old horse for the United States Army. Well, now, there just ain't any old horse in this whole herd. You'll take them all or none. Mr. Thomas, I'm sure you're aware of the fact that uh, times are hard. Maybe not as hard as you think. <laughs> the Army's not that hungry for horse flesh. This country is going through a period of reconstruction. Money is in short supply. Hmm? Who can you sell them to if not to us? Monsieur Patan, hold up a minute there. Just for the record, what are you paying? Top money, $25 a head. Last month it was $35. <laughs> but this month it's $25 a head. Well, these gentlemen have offered to take the whole barrel sight unseen. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Thomas. And what's your top offer? $35 a head, of course. You just bought yourself a herd. And you can tell that Max Million that he won't find better animals between Montezuma and the Canadian border. Just a minute. You're selling horses to Maximilian in preference to your own country's army? No, I'm selling horses for $35 in preference to $25. You two figured to make $10 a head. Are you calling us thieves? Well, Mr. Parker, yes. That's a pretty accurate description. Wait a minute, I didn't do anything. You should have. Read that message again, Sergeant. Eighteen rolling units of men, women, and children passed through Gladeville, Texas, 10.20 p.m. this day. Suspected Confederates, probable destination Mexico, detain, search, and turn back. Seems I've heard that bird before, sir, at Missionary Ridge. And if I'm not mistaken, that's a gray belly sapsucker.
sorry, Miss Ann. We didn't plan things this way. Let him go, Sergeant. Clyde, Gibbs, turn him loose. Let him go. I don't mean to. I know, Sergeant. But if I can't have the whole dog, I don't want the tail. Yes, sir. probably cross him at the old monastery, Eagle Pass. Yeah, boom. Well, if we do not see each other again uh, until we rendezvous on the plain of Durango, bon courage, monsieur. Thank you. They are fine-looking animals, Mr. Thomas. The emperor will be pleased. I hope he is. But whether he is or whether he isn't, you have the money there when the horses arrive. Bon parole. À la bonne chance, hein? You. Calvary's coming for Clark. Damn government agents. Can they stop us? Not if we get across that river, they can't. Let's take them to Mexico! Let's go! <laughs> Mr. Giles, all 12 of us, just as soon as you tell us how to go about it. Next. Mr. McCartney, when are we going to have some meat? Right now, if you want it. Belly cheater. Hi, Brett. You know what good food is, don't you? You mangy old cat. Hey, McCartney. Mr. McCartney. There's something crawling in these beans. Well, you can speak to it, but don't play with it. Or else the others will want one of their beans, too. Hold that plate. Yes, sir. I can just feel all that money in my pocket right now. What are you going to do with it when you get it? 
Well, I had to give that a lot of good thought, but I somehow ain't come to set right down on the notion yet. I know what I'm gonna buy me, some pack animals and traps. Whatever's left over, I'm gonna get drunk. And if I ever sober up again, I'm heading for the Rockies. Well, that might be fine for you, Whit, but me being better bred, of course, I got higher ambitions. Like what? Like build me a small library under a big elm someplace. Me and Highbred's gonna go to St. Louis and open up a little cat house. Everything quiet out there? Would you believe it, John Henry? I had to wake two of the men. Let's hope it stays that way. You ain't expecting trouble, are you, John Henry? Trouble? Well, let's see. We got Maximilian on one hand and Juarez on the other and bandits in between. And on top of that were Americans in Mexico taking a cavi of horses to a very unpopular government. Why should we expect trouble? How come you didn't tell us that beforehand? How come you didn't ask me? John Henry, there's a box canyon about four miles from here. Enough forage to fill them? No, sir, but there's enough to hold them. There's something else. I rode across two trails. One was wagons and horses. The second trail was many riders, at least 40 and maybe 60. The second trail ran just out of sight of the first. Well, if you were to tell me that a year ago in Virginia or Tennessee, I'd suspect ambush. Look that way to me. Short grab. There's forage and water about four miles ahead in the Box Canyon. Move them in there and hold them till we get back. Where are you going, John Henry? Don't believe it. Pick up that bucket. Well, howdy, Sergeant Newby. Save your howdy for later, Jameson. Right now, let me see you start currying that horse. Yes, sir. It's like old times, ain't it? Just like old times, Colonel. Riders approaching. Two riders are coming. We have company. Good afternoon. My name's Thomas. We're driving a herd of horses south, just over the hill. I'm Colonel James Langdon, Mr. Thomas. What can I do for you? Well, it isn't what you can do for us. We came to warn you that you're probably riding into a bandit ambush. Now, how do you happen to know that? Well, Blue Boy, here's a full-blooded Cherokee. When he suspects something, you usually get it. There's 40 to 60 riders moving parallel to you, just out of sight. Wait until we get into those hills? That'd be my guess. What did you say your name was? John Henry Thomas. Don't I know you from somewhere? To my knowledge, Colonel, we've never met before. <sighs> well, we appreciate the warning, sir. It's late. Will you and your friend join us for supper? Stay the night? It's the best offer we've had all day. Yeah, that's 
It's nothing like a full stomach facing the unknown future. <laughs> well, I hate to be persistent, Colonel, but uh, I think the future is pretty certain. I fully agree. I think they'll give you a couple of days to get up into the hills before they strike. But if this was my outfit, I'd hold right here and make them come to me. It's good thinking. Never let yet the enemy choose the site of his own destruction. I like to play in my yard. What are these bandits after? Gold, horses, women. We had an experience or two with them before the war. Were you perchance in the war, Mr. Thomas? Yes, Captain, I was. Would it be brash and presumptuous of me to ask which side you were on, Mr. Thomas? Well, I favor to think that I was on the right side, Mrs. Langdon. I detect a shadow of animosity towards my question. Could it be that you are a Yankee soldier? What a question to ask a man. Yes, ma'am. I was a Yankee soldier. Mr. Thomas, about to make my rounds before I turn in tonight. Would you care to accompany me? Thank you, sir. I suspected it when I saw those Union trousers on that Indian boy. My son was killed by Union cavalry at Shiloh, Mr. Thomas. We call it Pittsburgh Landing. You were there then? I was. May I ask your rank? As a colonel in that cavalry. John Henry Thomas, of course. Well, you were on George Custer's right flank when you charged the breastworks at Madisonville, weren't you? We did a job that day, didn't we? You were damn cruel. Cruel? Those Johnny Rebs had 40 pounders looking right down our throat. Did you think you were coming to a ball? Sergeant! Yes, sir. <laughs> I can find the time. I'm going to sit down and write the social history of bourbon. Tell me something, Mr. Thomas. Were you, by chance, at Chickamauga? I asked because I lost my brother there, Ann's husband. I lost 23 in my command at Chickamauga. Friends and sons of friends, men that I'd known all their lives. Now can I ask you a question, Colonel? Fire one, Mr. Thomas. Why did you come clear out here to continue a war that ended months ago in Virginia? Because I'm a stubborn man. Does that satisfy you? No. Because I got no taste for losing to a lot of Yankee rabble. How about that? It won't wash. You can be a very aggravating man, Mr. Thomas. Sergeant? Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's just say we haven't seen the end. You'll see it quick enough if you keep drinking this stuff. Excuse me, Colonel. Sergeant? Help yourself. Suggestion from a Flat River Indian fighter? Why don't you arm your women? That's what we did on the Bozeman and the California. Oh, no. trail. All our night pickets come in yet? All but Jameson, sir. We'll go get him. Carlisle? Little George? It 
Jameson, sir. Boy, take him down, John. your rifle to every woman knows how to use it. Yes, sir. Carry on, Sergeant. Ladies. Colonel. Looks like he wants to talk. We have nothing to talk about. Well, he's got you outnumbered. Let's start from there. Finding ourselves outnumbered, Colonel Thomas, is a fact of life we've gotten used to. With women and children in the pot? I'll go, sir. No. The Colonel and I will go. Let's understand each other, Thomas. Your Indian friend rode out of here last night with no explanation. He hadn't returned. One false move on your part and my men won't miss. Friends, your men have been missing me for years. As far as that Indian boy is concerned, his father was Bold Eagle, one of the bravest warriors that ever rode a horse. And on top of that, he's my adopted son. And I haven't done this much explaining in years. Don't press me, Captain. Anderson. Yes, sir. Windage and elevation, Mrs. Langdon. Windage and elevation. Buenos días, señores. Yo soy Escalante. Do you speak English? Ah, sí. I speak English most excellently. Well, then, tell us what you want and be damn quick about it. We want everything. We're so poor, and we need so much. I'm going to ask you one more time. What do you want? We want your wagons, your horses, your guns, and your gold. And you also have some women, señor. Serious. You can bet your life on it. It's preposterous. Yeah. I have more mains than you. Yeah, and if you want to lose most of them, you come right on ahead. Otherwise, you better hightail your ass right on out of here. I'll fight a thousand of them before I give you a penny. I was hoping you'd say that. Is the flap on your holster snapped or unsnapped, my Confederate friend? Snapped, my Yankee friend. Well, I guess I'm his pigeon. <laughs> Shoot the man. Conversation kind of dried up, ma'am.
tell me they're leaving. No, ma'am. They're reforming to charge again. Leastwise, that's their plan. Even now, ma'am, that's Blue Boy's little surprise. Well, I'll be damned. Ms. Langdon, the colonel, your brother-in-law, said you lost your husband during the war. Yes, Mr. Thomas. I'm sorry. You didn't know him. Why should you be sorry? My cavalry was in that engagement. Thomas, I want to thank you. No thanks are necessary. They were our enemies as much as they were yours. Our own people shoot them on sight. All the same, we're in your debt. Colonel, why don't you take all these people and go on home? There's no telling what you're going to run into farther south. In a day or two, we make contact with a military escort from Emperor Maximilian. We are going home. It's ahead of us. All right, Colonel. Who are you waving at, Blue Boy? Tell me all about it. I was thinking about that girl. What girl? The Confederate colonel's daughter. Mm. The one named Charlotte. She's a pretty girl. A little young, but pretty. I want her. You want her? And she wants me. Well, how'd you figure that out? You raised me to know John Henry. Well, I taught you what to do when the snow comes, how to survive in a blizzard, and I taught you how to deal with men. But women. Nobody knows what's on a woman's mind. Well, she wants me. And when we go home, she'll be with me. Yeah. 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 Anything wrong, John Henry? Not yet. Give me a cup of coffee. Never mind, I got his coffee. This damn sense is burner cut in half. Man's coming, John Henry. I'm Colonel Langdon, sir. I'm to wait for an answer. 
We're in a new camp waiting for an escort for Maximilian. There's a map on the other side. What's the matter? Ain't you Yanks ever seen a live one before? <laughs> Last time I seen a pretty gray uniform like that, it was all full of holes. <laughs> Do you know what's in this, Sergeant? Well, of course I know. Well, there must have been a few words in that camp before the colonel sat down and wrote this out. Yes, sir, there was a whole lot of words. I thought Captain Anderson was going to have an apoplexy. <laughs> and how about you personally, Sergeant? What do you think about it? Well, ought to be right interesting. <laughs> Anything wrong, John Henry? You won't believe it, but we've been invited to a Fourth of July party. <laughs> We'll be on our best manners today. Glad you could join us, Colonel. Thank you, Colonel, for inviting us. First time we've ever been invited to a Confederate shindig. Well, I'm not surprised, all things considered. <laughs> Get down. Thank you. Get down, all of you. Well, we didn't intend to interrupt the festivities. Well, what are y'all looking at? You ever seen a Yankee before? Just people. Start playing! Captain. Sir? This is Colonel Thompson's men to take care of. Sir, I'll... They're our guests, Captain. Make sure that they enjoy themselves. Yes, sir. Wilkes! I'm getting a little dry, Colonel. Would you care to join me, or uh, would you indulge? Where's the sergeant? I'll risk it. <laughs> Follow me. Thank you. <laughs> Yankee boys hungry? Captain appointed me to tend to you. There's a mess of beans and ham up yonder. There's some coffee and grits, too, if you don't mind. Grits? I wouldn't touch them. Why not? Might be unclean. Well, it will be a change in cooking. Oh, great to that. Me, Thank too. You. Make some home. Be right with you. Thank you. Mrs. Langdon? Mr. Thomas? That's a mighty attractive dress. French, isn't it? Yes. I bought it in New Orleans before the war. I've seldom had occasion to wear it since. You surprised me, Mr. Thomas. You have knowledge of ladies' fashions? Well, I was once married, and I have knowledge of the cost of such things. Here you are, sir. Oh. Sipping liquor? Good. What finer than what the sergeant provides. <laughs> May you be in heaven half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. <laughs> Do your hell. Jimmy, excuse me, Colonel Thomas. Certainly. Cousin Cora and that same. Well, they're having another go around. Oh, shoot. Would you excuse us, please? Of course, <laughs> Colonel. Yeah, tip so. You said that you were once married, Mr. Thomas. Yes, ma'am. Lucky for me, she left me. I must say, Mr. Thomas, that whatever your faults are, you do have a quaint kind of honesty. Well, she was so busy being a lady that she forgot to be a woman. It was Indian country, and she didn't like that. It was cold in the winter, hot in the summer, and dusty in the dry spells, and she didn't like that. And when I want to go hunting and fishing, I go hunting and fishing, and she didn't like that. And I wanted children, and she didn't like that either. She didn't like much, did she? She's happy now, I guess. She's living in Philadelphia with her cat, giving piano lessons. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mr. Thomas? Thank you. Is that Indian boy really your adopted son? Yes, but I'm as proud of him as if he were my own blood. Charlotte? How old are you? Sixteen. Nobody ever looked at me the way you do. 
Scarlet! Oh, I'm gonna kill that Bubba Wilkes. Scarlet! Why are you afraid to have someone see me kiss you? Because... Because what I feel is private. I've never felt like this before. And I want to keep it. I want to keep it just like it is. Charlotte! I believe you promised me the next set. Button? No. Maybe you ain't holding your mouth right. My name's Hugh Lock Mudlow. How are you fellas today? Say you wouldn't have to have a little jug of whiskey on you, would you? They won't give me one. They won't talk to me or nothing. Just cause I wouldn't join their army. Well, why wouldn't you join the army? Didn't want to get shot, that's why. Sure glad you fellas came over here today, though. I ain't had nobody to talk to and Hey! You made your point, Bobby Joe. Let it go. Making the colonel's part, hmm? You know, we got a Arkansas razor back that's just whooped everybody in our outfit. Well, me and the boys were just wondering if uh, maybe you had somebody you thought might could take him. Are you speaking of the manly art of self-defense, Sergeant? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm here to tell you. Root hog and die in no hole spot. John Henry, it wasn't my idea. Tried him out. Little George never lost a fight. Little George, he better have some meat on him. You sure about this, Bobby Joe? Trot him out. We'll go get him, newbie. Oh, 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 oh. Three round the rosy, the rosy. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. <laughs> Tell me it ain't what I think it is. I can't fight. I'm tired of hurting people. This time you gotta fight. You got to uphold the honor of the outfit. I can't. And Bluebellies calls you yellow. You know I ain't no coward. You youngers now, you go on and play. Go on. Right here. Get you out of that blouse. Yes, sir. Well, gentlemen, here he is. <laughs> you sure you want to go through with this thing? Biggest red I ever saw. It's the biggest anything I ever saw. <laughs> here. All right, your folks. Huh? Oh. I'm right proud to meet you. I'm little George. Get him, Bobby Joe. He ain't tough. He ain't tough. Oh. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> There's no coward. But he's outnumbered.
Watch me. Oh. Well, it was bound to happen. Bound to. I sure don't feel much like it. No, me neither. It's just one fool thing after another. Yep, mature you. Jimmy, can't you stop this? Stop what? It just started. Call that exactly failed you? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. Oh, nice party talk, Henry. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh. Now, stop far I ought to be able to stop them. Not without taking a lump, ma'am. All right, then. Get him, Buster. <laughs> hey, Newman, will you look at Bubba? <laughs> Lieutenant! Will! Lieutenant! Lieutenant Wilkes! Is this any conduct becoming an officer? No, sir. <laughs> Would you care to make this unanimous? With pleasure, Colonel Langdon. Well, now, why did you want to do a thing like that? I want this stopped. I want this stopped now! Well, that's civilization for you. Not like Philadelphia. Huh? But nothing. Oh, uh, Colonel. Sergeant's got a bell for him. Well, thank you, Colonel. You've been a perfect host. Always heard of Southern hospitality. Now my men understand what it means. Well, I thought my men would do better, Colonel, seeing how it's the first time in years we had you Yankees outnumbered. <laughs> Y'all come back, yeah? Windage and elevation, Mrs. Langdon. Always remember, windage and elevation.
suppose bandits done it? Bandits would have stripped him. More than likely, waristas. I want one man to go back to those southerners and tell them to forget their escort from Maximilian. This is it. I might have known it to be him. He's been acting kind of peculiar lately, John Henry. Figure he's sick? Yeah. There'll be no escort from Maximilian. John Henry sent me to tell you. How does he know that? We ran across them four, five miles south of here. They're dead. John Henry thinks the Waristas did it. See. Colonel, you're not gonna believe that, are you? Why should I not believe it? Why would those Yankees bother to send us word of anything? It just doesn't make sense. What reason would I have in coming to you with such a lie? Yes, Captain. What reason? It's late, son. May as well stay the night. Thank you, sir. Margaret, Ian, this is another place. This young man's joined us for supper. Two men ahead of the column, two men at the rear, and two men on each flank. Yes, sir. Good night, Captain. Good night, sir. Corporal? Yes, sir. Jimmy, how far are we from Durango? Three days. You know, I, I've been thinking an awful lot about home. I have too, Maggie. And my home is you. Oh, Jimmy. Ask me how old I am. Do you care? No. I'm glad you're young. It gives us more time to be together. Oh, I'll always be young. If I always feel the way I do now. When we go back to the territory, you'll be with me.
Fox says, sorry, partner, you're going to die. <laughs> Them hard derbies was mighty fine, Mr. McCartney. But for my trimmings, I'd like a Kansas City steak. Well done. You go to hell. Hey, John Henry, did you ever hear about that gal in St. Louis? She had the dangdest itch in the dangdest... Shut up. Itch. We're coming down to the end of it now. We've lost 500 horses between here and the border. And I don't think that's very funny. We lose any more and somebody's gonna be damned uncomfortable. You know what? I think John Henry's scared. How about some coffee? Kind of worried about him, ain't you? Who? Well, you're the worst liar I ever come across, John Henry. Blue boy, that's who. Well, he should have caught up with us three days ago. You don't reckon he'd come across bandits, do you? No, I think he's too smart for that. You know what I'd be thinking if I was you? I'd be thinking he made off with that little Reb gal. And I'd be thinking that he was just about to the Rio Grande by this time. Well, that's what I've been thinking. Ah, oh, he wouldn't do that. Ah, oh, he wouldn't do that. Thanks, Shirt Trump. I've changed my mind. Oh, oh! to make the count, Mr. Thomas. Good. Did you encounter any trouble along the way? Well, nothing to speak of. Well, we're here and the horses are here. How about that money? Oh, it's coming. By special courier with a troop of the infamous cavalry. He is most appreciative. Well, how soon is that special courier due? Any day. Shall we make the count? Why not? Two thousand five hundred and five horses. I am surprised, Mr. Thomas. How's that? Well, I, I thought you would lose more on a, on a long trip like that. Well, I had an understanding with my men. I asked them not to lose any more, and they didn't. <laughs> How long are we going to be here, John Henry? Till they give us the money. My men haven't been home for four years. We're a little anxious. So we won't be hard to find. We'll be right handy. Compliment, sir.
Colonel James Langdon, sir, Confederate States Army. My aide, Captain Anderson. General. My name is Lázaro Rojas. In the name of our Emperor Maximilian, I welcome you to our Pueblo. We have prepared a welcome banquet for you and your people, Colonel Langdon. Please do us the honor of extending our invitation to those of your party. Thank you very much, sir. Captain. Sir. Lieutenant. Dismount the troops. Yes, sir. Sergeant, dismount your troops. Prepare to dismount. Dismount. Ladies. <gasps> Let me go. <laughs> Consider yourselves prisoners of the revolution. I shall protest this to Emperor Maximilian, sir. We take no orders from Maximilian, Colonel Langdon. Our president is Don Benito Juarez. The drums from Mexico beckon us, Colonel. Please. James. Would you excuse us, Mrs. Langdon? Think you're going to scare us with threats, General? You underestimate us. No, no, Colonel Langdon. We have estimated you very well. Aside from the men in your party, there are 32 women and 17 children. You are friends of Maximilian. He has brought the French into our country, and they have tried to ride rough shot over our people. Now Maximilian has brought you, Southern Americans, into our country because he can no longer get help from Napoleon. These Frenchmen kill the entire population of a small village. Every man, woman, and child butchered. Drunk for his general, his general, and his council. Attention! That is what happens, Colonel, invaders of my country. My people are not invaders. You are here, and you are the friends of Maximilian. But we're not your enemies. What do you want of us, General? Our forces need horses, Colonel. Not far from here, there is a herd of 3,000. Thomas. Yes, Thomas. I I'm afraid I don't understand you, General. You will deliver this to Thomas. I'll be damned if I will. I believe you will, Colonel. Our revolution needs those horses. Benito Juarez needs those horses. I'm a Confederate officer. You can't expect me to go begging those Yankees for anything. 
That's in the first place. In the second place, they wouldn't do it. They have no reason to care what happens to us. Well, General, that man, Thomas, would spit in my face. You will do as I say, or you will all be shot. I'm not asking any Yankee for anything. Very well. Regresen el prisionero a su lugar. You will have the horses in this place by noon tomorrow. Or you will all be shot. Dug up something. Oh, yes. Come on, get up. Mr. John Henry? Yeah. Uh, we got company. Thank you, Mr. McCartney. We found this man. Found me? You trapped me, you... You're on time. I told you that uniform would get yeah. you in trouble. Mr. McCartney, you got the coffee ready? All ready. Good morning. Bonjour, yes. Wake you up? Oh, excuse me.
Get a little coffee in you and settle down. You can tell us what it's all about. I was given no choice. That's why I'm here. My family, they're all going to be murdered. All of my people in his hands. When we reached Durango, they, they gave us a party and then they tricked us. My people are prisoners of a Warista general. I didn't want to come here. I didn't want to cause you people any... Oh, damn it. Here, read this. General Rojas is more eloquent than I am. What does it say, John Henry? It's good coffee. Thank you. You really think so? Well, it's your game. How do you want to play it? John Henry, we've been dealt lots of tough hands since the summer of 61. Here's one I wish we could pass. Well, this don't leave us nothing, John Henry. We ain't never had nothing, no, Al. Now, wait a minute, Bobby Joe. You mean you're willing to give up all them horses to them Johnny Rebs? Well, I ain't no Christian, but my mama was. John Henry, you remember when I lost my horse up there at Pittsburgh Landing? Yeah. There I was without a horse behind that log, and them Rebs was all over me. But there's one didn't have no gun. Remember me telling you about that one come crawling up to me behind that log? Yeah, but what's that got to do with this? Well, this Reb, he said he was all tuckered out and he wanted to give himself up. I told him to get the hell on out there. I didn't want to. You know what he said to me? No. You've got me whether you want me or not. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're stuck with us. Well, John Henry, I... Well, if we have to get there by noon, we better... Where's that? Short Grub, you better throw a couple of outriders in front of the point when we get started. Yo. Break camp. Alors, pour moi ici, c'est l'endroit parfait pour les arrêter. Muy bien. Allez. Frenchies have really found some help. I thought we'd run away from all that. What about it, John Henry? Looks like we got ourselves mixed up in somebody else's war. Yeah, it sure does. What are we gonna do now? Well, that's already been decided. Bring the two chuck wagons up here and fill them full of men and rifles. I'll get them. We'll give him a taste of General Sherman's war. I remember.
getting a little close, ain't you, John Henry? Yep. You ready, Colonel? Ready. Right to the side. Turn him loose, McCartney! Hey, you don't have it! Get out of that way! Get out of here! Take care of that bread for me. I said a lot of mean words to the boys, ain't I? You sure have, McCartney. Mr. McCartney. Well, you tell them I meant every damn word. ¡Vayan esos tambores!
completed your mission, Colonel Langdon. Thank you. Well, John Henry. James! <laughs> you must be Rojas. General Rojas. And you must be John Henry Thomas. You drive a hard bargain, General. War is war, Colonel. You should know that. Yeah, yeah. Win one, they lose one. It is cognac, the only good thing the French have brought to my country. May I propose that we drink to the health and success of my president, Don Benito Juarez, the revolution, and the future of Mexico. Here, here. And General? May I propose a toast to the United States of America? Not even for 3,000 horses? To the United States of America and the Confederacy. John Henry, what are that Indian boy's intentions? Probably disgraceful, Colonel. But it's not what he'll do to her, it's what she's done to him. much like old times, Colonel. No, nope, it ain't much like old times, Mr. Newby. What do you plan on doing once we get back home? Well, the only place a man can raise more hell than a can in a war is on the floor of the House of Representatives. An old friend of mine once told me people like to vote for heroes. So I guess that's what I'll do. That team working out all right? Sure. You going back to the Oklahoma Territory, Mr. Thomas? Yes, ma'am. Just as fast as I can get there. There are many women out there? Some. Good country, I suppose. From the Missouri to the Pacific Ocean, it's mostly good land for farming and raising cattle and raising a family. Are you going to raise a family? Well, I... Uh... Solomon, can't you play any other tune? Sure, boss. Not neither, Yank. I do miss Mr. McCartney. Yeah, but not his cooking. No, me neither. Put a feather in his hat and call it macaroni. 